Alright guys, so today we're going to look at Phase Swag and his sensitivity specifically. Because I feel like, yes, Phase Swag is a very good player. He drops straight bombs and he's he's a really good Warzone player, right? But he does have a lot of questionable settings. And right here it says he plays, what, Dead Zone 20, 9-9. This was three months ago, April 7th, 2021. If you go to his other video, I still think he uses the same settings. So this video is based off of if he still uses the same settings. If he changes them, I'm sorry, I did not see it. These are the settings that I'm just going to base it off of, and I'm just going to assume that he uses these settings. So controller settings, he has, let me see. Actually, first let's start with FOV. What FOV does face swag use? He uses 110. Stuff, so right now I have input. Field of view, I put on 110. Brightness, 59. All right, remember what I talked about uh, in my FOV video? I said that 120 is risky because you can't see as much, and you do lose the aim assist for controller players. So he has 110. He can get more aim assist, and he can see a little bit farther, but he can't react like super fast, like of that high sensitivity as 120 FOV players can. And I guess he's willing to take that risk. So he's playing 110, which I think is great. Next. Okay, so he plays on tactical. He doesn't play flipped. Uh, I assume he has trigger stoppers. But even if he doesn't, playing tactical can be risky because playing flipped, you do get that advantage of being able to react at the exact moment. So I do recommend that Swag plays flipped. But hey, maybe he doesn't like flipped. I don't know. But he plays tactical. This is this is interesting right here. Swag plays twenty dead zone. There's there's people who play twenty dead zone, but I never thought that Phase Swag would actually play twenty dead zone. Like I said in my video before, higher dead zone equals more aim assist. So if he's playing on what nine nine and he has the twenty dead zone, it makes sense. He's probably able to lock on to people a lot easier than if he had a lower dead zone. So makes sense. 9-9. Nine, nine. Now, this is this is the tricky part, guys, because 9-9, nine, nine, it's like if you have a higher sensitivity and then you have a higher dead zone, it kind of it kind of balances out. So if I play it on like 6-6, six, six, but I played point zero six like Joe o plays, he plays point zero six dead zone, 6-6, six, six, he's able to react super quick on a lower sensitivity. But he's playing 9-9 nine, nine, and he's playing 20 dead zone, and he's able to like look fast and then stop on the person because his dead zone's so high. So that's interesting. I never knew Phase Swag played on that. Then he has one for both, which is pretty it's pretty high for a nine nine. And dynamic. I, most I pros play dynamic. Guys, let me know in the comments. Do you guys shoot with your triggers or your bumpers? You See he he <laughs> he doesn't know. He's like people shoot with their bumpers. He already knows about flipped. He already knows about that. But he I guess he just likes the triggers better. So hey, that's on him. But that's his settings, and now I guess we're just going to look at his recent gameplay and see what he does. Let's see what he does. Alright, that's that's one thing I have with the 20 dead zone. 20 dead zone has a lot of benefits. He probably gets the, the 20 dead zone benefits. I don't get that because I don't play on 20 dead zone. But look how he lines up with this person right here. Ready? Look how he lines up with that person. Let me play it in slow motion. Look how he lines up. He missed the target. He looked, he looked to the left. He probably didn't even see him, so that's probably why he missed. But he missed the target, and it's really hard to make those tiny adjustments on a higher dead zone. So he has to like try really hard to like put it onto the person. And look, see how he put it onto the person? He did that because he didn't look at the person with his right stick. He moved to the right to be able to make that tiny adjustment. So when you have a higher dead zone or higher sensitivity, a lot of players move their character in order to make the reticle hit the person right on target. They don't move the right stick. This can be a, a good thing because, look, he doesn't have to move his right stick really fast. But it could also be a bad thing because it can be a lot harder. Like, let's just say that guy was shooting Swag right now. Swag would most likely die because he wouldn't be able to have that time to react onto the guy and shoot him. And that's probably why he missed, like, the few shots on the guy he shot afterwards. So if we play it in normal. Station. 
He sees him late. I didn't even see that guy. But sheesh. Alright, so yeah, he got he got good shots there. He he knows how to shoot. Let me play back. One more time. Like you can still be really good on twenty dead zone. You can lock on easier, like I said. If you have like the higher dead zone, it allows you to be super smooth. And when I say like more dead zone gives you more aim assist, I don't mean like, oh, if you turn your dead zone up, you automatically get more aim assist. Now it's like how it works is the dead zone kind of smooths out your shot more to be able to lock on a lot easier with your aim assist. So technically, yes, higher dead zone does give you more aim assist. But he's able to be smooth right onto the target and hit him. So instead of being like snappy and locking on, he's like, he does it very smoothly to give him that nice shot. And then look, times like that where his shot could be so smooth, the dead zone doesn't even matter. He can play on like 20 dead zone like he's playing and he can still just straight up lock on somebody because his dead zone's so high he can be very smooth onto the target. He's just smooth onto him. There was a guy close. My bounty, 23 meters. On me, on me, on me, on me. And there, dude, I'm impressed with this clip right here, too. Because look how swag, like, just shoots at the guy, right? There's a box right here, right? Like a dumpster or something? If it was me, I usually, I play on linear right now, so, like, my thing is, like, really, like, snappy. And then him, he's able to be very smooth, and he loses aim assist right here. Because since the guy's behind the dumpster, his aim assist is gone. Right? His aim assist is gone. He's He doesn't have no aim assist now while he's shooting at the guy. So he has to rely on no aim assist and just his aim. And then he's able to track right back on the guy and kill him. So the 20 dead zone, it allows you to be very smooth. And I do think that higher dead zones allow you to be more smooth without aim assist. 26 meters landing on you. Even with the MP5 long range too, he snapped on the guy. Me? Yeah, at the very end, at the very end. Wait, on me? Oh my god, dude. You got an RP. And then, just another example of the smoothness. Look how he turned on the guy. He turned on the guy, he moved very. He missed the target, but he was able to recenter very smoothly. Oh my god, dude. You got an RP. So he had the disadvantage of missing the target, but then he was able to recenter. Really I'm easily. Alright, I do want to say that your movement is a lot harder on higher sensitivities and on higher dead zones. So, you know, people like Joe, well, he plays 0 .06 dead zone, he plays 6-6, and he's known as the movement king. That's because he has a nice sensitivity where he can be able to turn around corners super fast and he can react to people and do all these movements. But the sensitivity is not too fast where he doesn't lose that muscle memory. So here, even if swag can control the nine cents or whatever the dead zone isn't the best for turning around corners so watch how he does his little movement in this building all right so let's let's play that in slow motion he doesn't slide around this corner he just runs straight up there you go Going straight up the stairs. Look how he turns. He turned a little bit early. He slid around here. And this would be very bad because let's just say somebody was right here. He wouldn't be able to turn around fast enough. And he wouldn't be able to shoot a guy who's right in here because he didn't slide like perfectly around the corner. He just ran up. But also this might not be his intention too because he might not think somebody's in here. He might just think they're up top. So he's just trying to rush up top. So let's see this slide. He slide way too early and it, he bumped into the rail and then it kind of delayed his momentum. Almost bumped into it again. He's looking at the wall. He's not running straight. He's not sliding around. the. If he knows there's a guy there, he's running straight up to him. 
He's not going to this corner and sliding around and popping out. So this can easily get him killed. But the guy was down, so he probably just wanted to go and kill the guy. So yeah, I understand if this clip is not 100% reliable, but it still gives like a demonstration of Swag's movement when he's just trying to rush a kill. And it could get him killed, because let's just say somebody had Ghost. Swag would have probably got killed there because his movement wouldn't be as good and he wouldn't be able to expect the guy to be there. Oh, Alright, look at this. Like I mentioned earlier, this, this is a good example of the aim. Alright, so shoots at that guy right and snaps to the other target. Look how he's shooting at this guy. Ready? And he's still shooting at the same spot. And then the other guy runs in the crosshair. I can't even zoom in, but like... Look, and the other guy runs in the crosshair. He's Swag's not moving his thing at all. Not at all. And that's because he can't make the super tiny adjustment with his dead zone. So he had to rely on that guy to run in his way in order for him to get that kill. And if the guy never ran in his way, then he would have had to look to the left and do it with his high depth zone. Hmm. All right, and then looking at this kill, let's see what he does. All right, so you get more aim assist, right? Even though he's like, no aim assist at the end. But he aims at the bottom of their feet. He's shooting at the bottom of their feet. And that guy, he was already crouched, so he's obviously going to shoot his chest. He's able to jump around. No, 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 no. Wait, no aim assist. Holy So right there, Swag could have got killed because... He was shooting at the body and he wasn't shooting at the head. And that can either be sensitivity, dead zone, or both. Because the higher dead zone is is actually really hard to shoot chest shots. And on top of that, if your sensitivity is too high, usually you just want to lock onto any part of the body and get a kill. Whereas if you have lower sensitivity, it will be a lot easier to just aim at the chest and higher and be able to kill those people. Alright, so, like how I said before, how I had, like, it wasn't the best example for Swag's movement because he wasn't really fighting anybody. He was just chasing somebody who was already down. But here, he's fighting somebody. So let's see Swag's movements right here. And I'll slow it down. Looks to the right, looks to the left. Slides again. It's not like a clean slide because he's not sliding around the thing. He's like a little wobbly slides and runs straight Shoots at the guy He runs to this wall looks to the left All right, this is fine and then he kind of like he doesn't run straight towards the wall, he runs a little bit to the right. And this could be a bad thing because if you run straight towards the wall, you're going to be able to get in cover more in time than if you're just running out of here. Because either the guy can jump out on top of here and then shoot Swag while he's running out here. Or maybe Swag can just get in here and the guy starts chasing him. Swag would have more cover to be able to either drop shot or get behind here instead of having to run in the window or the house and get shot from behind. Okay, and look how Swag jumps on the thing, right? Let's drop back here. Swag's goal is to jump on top of the thing. I don't even know what it's called. His goal is to jump on top of there. So he doesn't run straight towards there. He runs to the right and then to the left. And if he had either a lower dead zone or lower sensitivity, he would be able to be a lot straighter and be able to jump right on top of it. 
But it was a tiny bit of delay. It's not going to hurt him right now. It's just that in serious situations, it could cost him. But at this situation, it's, it's not a big deal. And I do want to say, too, that search and destroy settings and other serious settings are a lot different than Warzone settings. Usually when people play Warzone, they play for kill races. And I understand that if you have higher sensitivity to stuff like that, let's just say, you know, I played 4-4 or 5-5. People can play 6-6, 7-7, They can play those because if they're playing kill races, their objective is to kill as many people as possible before the match ends. So obviously, if you have lower sensitivity and stuff, you can be smart, you can plan everything out, you can have somebody right in your crosshairs and hit all your shots. But if you're not able to move faster than your opponent, then it can cost you because they're running out and getting way more kills than you. So I do think that yes, you should have a little bit higher sensitivity for Warzone, but it shouldn't be too high where it also causes you to get killed. 